welcome to Goldfest Conclave 2021 by Herald Global and Bark Asia. Today we have a technology enhancer evangelist with a three decade pioneering experience, Dr. Reggie Kurin Thomas. He is also the group CTO of Verentia. He is one of the leading forces in the frontier technology arena. A highly commended former naval commander, Dr. Thomas had always had a great interest in futuristic technology and its work. Welcome to Herald Global and Bark Asia, Mr. Reggie Kurian Thomas. So I'd like to begin by asking you, what did you have to majorly adapt to in the pandemic? Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, though the pandemic threatens most sectors, the general reliance on digital technology and a forced move to more robust and remote IT has enabled the digital world to grow and to innovate. And right. all this while supporting knowledge workers across industries and across the world. So global connectivity through technology has shown that international collaboration can be easy. And this has permanently changed how people and businesses consume technology and uh, conduct business. So with these changes in mind, there are three ways the pandemic has changed the tech industry, that is digital deliverance and dependency. You know, it has, right. uh, it has uh, just come out of its comfort zone. Then there's cultural and a collaboration, which can lead to increased innovation. And also it is disrupting online and offline operations. So in short, the sky is the limit uh, for a very buoyant sector that is still growing year on year and hungry right. for more talent, innovation, and uh, ambitiously radically different ideas. Right. So I would like to ask you, what is your ABC rule or golden rule for leadership? Sure. So leaders uh, who have a higher cognition, they act from an authentic sense of purpose and clarity. So cognitive leaders have higher levels of influence, are more effective, and create positive, lasting change, value, culture, growth, opportunity for themselves, stakeholders, teams, and their organizations. And they are great at recognizing and managing well-known traits of bad leaders like ego or lack of wisdom. Yeah. So for me, the ABC framework, that is A plus B plus C is equal to success. So A, I would call it is activating and triggering event that created or caused a potential stress in the company. B is the belief that is through thoughts, analysis, validation of attitudes, rules, etc., and sees the consequences, that is emotions like fear or worry or sadness. And this behavior outcomes are realized in result of one's beliefs, perceptions, and self-talk in response to triggers. So that is my ABC framework. That's an amazing formula. So, so as you mentioned, there are highs and lows in business and as well as in personal life. So what is that, uh, you know, like that factor which keeps you motivated to impact your success? Nice. So motivation to me is the significant predictor of success. It gives me a sense of direction. Now, if I don't know why I should do something, the likelihood of actually taking action will be minimal. So I always create a vision and know what my purpose is, which ensures that I'm pulled towards the achievement of my goals instead of being pushed. As a result, motivation becomes effortless. And motivation has transformed fear into a powerful plan of action. I realized early that I can neither let fear prevent me from moving towards my goals, or right. I can use it as a tool for motivation. It's my choice, and I chose the latter. Motivation helps me bounce forward from setbacks. When life tries to convince me that the game is over, motivation is what has cheered me on and reminded me not to give up. Hence, I choose to living with the purpose of giving back. I'm motivated to give back to the world and help others. And this has been an innate desire uh, to create an impact in the world. So can you shed a little light on your experiential journey? Sure. So taking a look at the failures and the tough times of others is one of the best ways to get over my own shortcomings. It's important to see that failure is a part of the process. 
And that to be successful, you absolutely must learn to make it as a tool opposed to a roadblock. Failure hurts and that may never change, but it's how you learn to get better. So companies must continuously evolve to stay relevant, uh, innovative right. and competitive. And choosing the right approach to adaptation and growth is difficult. And one good reason for growth to become more competitive. And maybe that's the core business is under threat or the firm has reached the limits of its natural market. So it's time to stretch. And the company's existing resources may or may not be used effectively. And that perhaps leads to a developing an internal exploratory environment complemented by alliance-based activity. And less rationally, when business leaders feel pressure from their investors to grow for growth's sake, they may seek results at any cost, which can result in aggressive and often expensive acquisitions. We know that 70% of acquisitions fail and post-purchase integration is a nightmare. So acquisition is very often the most disruptive, costly and painful option. And if we want to choose the path to grow smartly, we first need to shape the decision-making context in such a way that we have a diversity of opinion. I learned that we might think is the worst thing that ever happened to us in that moment. Actually, might turn out to be the best thing that ever happened. I can recount a number of instances when I thought the world was about to laugh about, was about to end. And I laughed about it many years ago, thinking my lucky stars, and that's how things turned out. I'm presently the group CTO of the company, Berencia, right. and we are engaged in the business of providing innovative, reliable and sustaining solutions for farmers, businesses and governments, and develop solutions for a greener future. And Berencia was created with one objective in mind, pioneer the world's first socio-economic empowerment company, a paradigm shift in creating sustainable technology solutions for people and environment while ensuring economic growth for all stakeholders through the social empowerment. Right. So, so what would you like to tell the industry aspirants? To never be discouraged with failure and rejections. Don't stop learning and don't be shy to meet new people. Work hard, stay determined, and you'll get recognized. Conflicts can happen, but don't lose yourself in the process. Right. Follow your heart and do what you think is the best choice. Be patient, don't rush, don't give up on your dream. Opportunities don't happen. You need to create them. Right, that's a beautiful thought, sir. So, sir, lastly, I would like to ask you, how do you feel about winning the industry's number one award? Firstly, I'm thankful that I was recognized for this award. I'm extremely honored to be receiving such an important award of the industry's number one. I'm earnestly grateful for the recognition I've received for my work because I'm very sure that every other nominee for this award was as capable, if not more, of winning this award. I have faced many challenges on my way here, but each one of them has only strengthened me to make me the person I am today, someone who knows exactly what he wants, someone who has set his eyes on the goal and does not lose sight of it unless it's achieved. Winning this award would never have been possible without the inspiration I have received from my seniors and my colleagues, from whom I have the deepest respect. I sincerely thank each one of you, especially my parents for molding me who I am, the Indian Navy for inculcating my value systems, universities like Stanford and Kent State for being the ideal platforms for technological research, and my present group chairman, Mr. Satyam Bose, for helping me reach a stage where I can proudly hold up this award as a mark of my achievement. I only promise to get better at my work so that you can see me here for more such awards. Thank you. All the best, sir, for your future endeavors. Thank you so much for your time.